Hello Captains, I'm Kato Genesis. Welcome to a video all about the features and getting geared up quick in Starfield's New Game Plus. I've set this up to hopefully be a one-stop shop for all things a player would want to know in New Game Plus, and even though I've tried to pack a lot of information into this guide, you're welcome to use the chapter points or timestamps below if you need something specific. So you've transcended in your first playthrough and have the option of New Game Plus. How will you play it this time? How many differences are there? This is a new universe after all. You have a snazzy outfit, cool powers, and an advanced spacecraft, but the trade-off begins to set in. Your god roll weapons, armor, money, resources, ships, outposts, and pile of aid items are all gone. If you're a particularly high level when you decide to jump into New Game Plus, this might be a crippling first couple of hours if you run into hostiles. So, this first section of the guide will be all about the features you can expect in New Game Plus, and the second, likely larger section, will be all about getting yourself geared out for this new run. Let's get into those details. The armor you start each New Game Plus with will be a one-piece legendary armor set, starting with the Starborn spacesuit Astra, with its appearance changing and armor stats increasing each time you enter the Unity up to nine times, with the current final suit being Venator. This one-piece suit has its own boost pack too. Unfortunately though, the Starborn suit cannot be modified, and the legendary effects it comes with are randomly rolled. Depending on what effects you get, you may want new armor sooner rather than later, since this is indeed a single gear piece that can be replaced by a helmet, pack, and suit with their own benefits. This feels very much like a get you started kind of suit, unless you want to make this a challenge run. The Starborn Guardian ship you start out with this time around is fast and nimble, can grab jump up to 30 light years, and has a bit more storage than the Frontier, with a little shielded cargo capacity as well. The Guardian currently gets upgraded each time you pass through the Unity until you get the Starborn Guardian 6. Sadly, the Guardian's interior doesn't seem to change and leaves a lot to be desired if you like having a ship with usable modules or beds at the very least. Unfortunately, the fighting style for this craft appears to be hit and run style too, due to painfully slow recharge of its weapons. If you are running with any tech skills, you'll have all the more reason for wanting a better ship sooner rather than later. You are once again given the frontier in New Game Plus, but we know this is the tutorial ship, and we also probably know that there's better alternatives. We'll get to that a little bit later. When you decide to meet up with Constellation for the second time, you get two choices. You can either skip the main story quest and spoil the plot to Sarah, or you can take part in the main quest again as if nothing has changed. You have changed though, and other Starborn do recognize that. I will warn you that if you choose to skip the main story, that tells the game that you're going to prioritize artifacts and temples, and all of Constellation's missions outside of this will be pretty much non-existent. No matter which you choose, after speaking with Sarah you'll be rewarded with level appropriate credits and some extremely basic equipment to start out. Not everything is the same in New Game Plus for obvious reasons, and you'll find dialogues here and there where you can use your Starborn status to make different observations, speed up exposition, or just get a funny reaction. Certain events also may not play out the same in every universe. This is definitely something that I don't want to spoil for you, but it gets quite interesting the more you travel through the Unity. Aside from some story changes, New Game Plus lets you improve your Starborn powers further since you're going to be able to return to the Anomaly Temples. This can be done in subsequent New Game Plus runs too, up to a max of rank 10 for each power. If this is all you want out of New Game Plus, however, put on a podcast or some background entertainment because floating into dancing lights over 200 times can get repetitive real quick if temples are your only activity. This is just me future-proofing a little bit in case things change in the future, but currently in the base game when you choose to go into New Game Plus, you cannot change your traits or character background for this new run, nor can you change them at an enhanced facility. Whether a patch changes this has yet to be seen, but you can be sure that I'll leave details in the pinned comment if that or even other details do. The bonuses from the 100 plus collectible magazines are still permanent to your character if you go into New Game Plus. Of course, if you missed any magazines in quest-locked areas, a new run will give you another chance to pick them up. 
Over our time with the game, I've learned that magazines in Starfield have a problem with consistency and reporting to the player when it comes to how bonuses are given. If you get a statistical bonus, for example, that is based on how many magazines you've picked up, not which ones. Conversely, recipes are granted from specific issues of magazines. These bonuses you get too are only displayed on the item description and currently not shown anywhere in your stats screen. Stranger still, New Game Plus seems to wipe the history of you picking up magazines, not the bonuses. I was sold this little nugget by my pal Bad Company Sarge, and I booted up the game immediately to test it myself while we were still on the call. It turns out that if you exclusively pick up that constellation guide sitting next to Sarah every New Game Plus without finding any other issues for it, you can have your fifth constellation guide bonus as soon as New Game Plus 4. So, duplicate magazines can rank up your bonuses as long as those duplicates are found in New game plus. I hope I explained this well enough because the way magazines function in this game currently is just a mess. If by some surprise twist magazine behavior gets patched, expect some details in the pinned comment just like the trait section. Even though I was fully prepared to invest in researching weapon mods and chems all over again, I was grateful to find out that my research persisted to the New Game Plus playthrough. So it appears that the only things we'll need to research are the things we didn't finish previously. The named weapons that show up in vendor inventory or in the world seem to scale to your character level when you show up. So with the massive reset that New Game Plus entails, you can benefit going back to some old favorites provided you have the credits to spend on them. Speaking of credits to gear up, let's get to the second section of this guide. Whether you choose to take on the story again or skip it, this next section is all about getting yourself prepped and ready for another run quickly. I've set up this section to start in New Atlantis, and each of these can be done pretty much in order or separately if you'd like. These first four things will be about both illegal and legal methods to get equipment and credits fast depending on how you like doing things. So let's get to those. If you're not above thievery, there are a couple of spots I like to go to in New Atlantis to steal some gear to either sell or use right off. First is the Mast Building, which you can travel to via the New Atlantis Transit, and take the elevator on the far left side of the station to the Defense Research Floor. Here, in the R&D Lab, there are numerous weapon cases to take from, with a small chance, of course, of these being rare, epic, or legendary. After getting all you can from here, you can immediately take the lift down to the Nat Station, and head to the larger lift on the other side of the station, and ride it down to the well. Off to the right from the elevator, there's two spots spots for equipment at Jake's bar. If you ever took a peek behind the bar, you would have noticed that there is a named Big Bang particle shotgun called Jake's Hangover Cure. This is a guaranteed particle weapon, so if you have the void form power or really good stealth, you can grab it while the patrons aren't looking, or blind your presence. Whether you choose to take the shotgun or not, there is also a secret weapon stash that you can access by taking the stairs next to Jake's bar and hopping to the second floor balcony. Here, there will be some pipes that lead to a ventilation shaft, which drops down into a small room with a smuggler's stashed goodies. There is a shutter you can activate here for maximum stealth, and the weapon case here might have something decent inside with extra ammo next to it. Currently, this stash also seems to respawn, so if you left the shutters open, you can check if it's replenished from the window by just hopping up on top of the clinic. Just so we don't get all turned around, we will start back at the clinic and head down the main walkway, past Kay's house, to UC surplus over by the security office. Antonio seemingly hasn't invested in cameras for the front of the shop, so stripping the mannequins, stealing the helmets, and grabbing the packs from the cubbies here is pretty effortless with the pillars and shelves to hide behind. Just be sure to save prior as Antonio does like to keep an eye on you if he knows you're there. Whether you want to risk taking stuff closer to the counter and along the walls is up to you. Either way, when you're done at UC Surplus, our last stop will be the Trade Authority to offload some of this ill-gotten loot, buy some digipics, and launder the stolen stuff we want to keep with the buyback button. Zoe probably won't have enough credits to buy up all the items that you've stolen, however, if you did launder the items you picked up first, you can simply take those items to another merchant, or just sit on the couch inside and wait 24 local hours, she should be restocked. 
finishing the Constellation introduction mission will set you up with some level appropriate credits that you can use to get yourself started. The workshop downstairs in the lodge also has two weapon displays, a few ammo boxes, and a medical crate to loot. There is of course the Constellation mission board if you feel like grabbing up all the survey missions too. After you're done here, we can move on to something a bit more lucrative. I know it's a bit boring, but getting credits the legal way usually is. Have you considered being a traveling bookseller? If you chose once again to take on the main quest, your first trip as a representative of Constellation will be to Cydonia on Mars to find a missing Vanguard pilot. Whether you're here for that or not, there's a kid you can find on the residential floor next to the Lux condo entrance by the name of Mitch Benjamin. If you speak with him, he can give you a quest called Media Sponge, where you track down each volume of a book series called Dragon Star Force. This 30 part quest not only nets you tons of credits depending on level each time but sends you do friendly colonies around the starfield to help remind you where some of the lesser known places are once you return with the book remember to always persuade mitch for more money as he'll give you up to three times the initial amount if you succeed with no real trade-off if you fail the reward did seem to cap out at 11,000 credits at high level with a successful persuasion and that's a lot of credits to go and pick up a book while you're going to different systems purchasing books some some of the vendors you're sent to will have other books for sale that Sinclair's books in Aquila City will pay 2,000 credits for. Here's a list of those books to look out for if you're wanting to double down on the traveling bookseller meta. Now for something only slightly more risky. On Porima 3, in the Porima system, you can run the Red Mile once for a handful of useful items. With your Starborn powers, this should now be a cinch for you, as Grav Dash, Personal Atmosphere, and Void Form trivialize the run itself. After you've spoken to Mei to start your, quote, first run of the Red Mile, the bodies of former runners along the way will have various helpful items like healing, chems, digipics, and more gear that you can just sell to the bartender once you return. Once you make it to the button at the beacon, the beacon button, there's a chest next to it that might have some decent gear inside as well. Upon completing the run and returning to Mei, she'll reward you with some credits and brute force, which is a named pacifier shotgun. It comes with the bashing effect, which can be useful for the type of weapon this is, but more importantly, it comes modded with a laser sight, muzzle brake, tactical stock, tactical magazine, and high powered, so it's a decent weapon to hold you over until you get something better. Beyond one run, I don't really recommend the Red Mile, unless there's some serious overhauling done with May's overlong intro and the generic rewards until you've run it 29 times. By the way, the reward at 29 runs currently is this, and absolutely not worth your time. At this point, you should know about contraband items. They are highly valuable, but of course a hassle if you're jumping systems frequently. There is one low effort spot in particular on Neon when you first get there that is quick and easy. When you first take the lift up to the Neon City core, you'll want to find Neon Security. As you are walking towards the Astral Lounge, you'll find it on the right after the Enhance storefront. In the back corner will be a room that holds stolen and contraband goods. The contraband crate should have at least a stack of contraband for you to take, as well as a piece of contraband sitting next to it. So long as you don't get spotted, you can take all of this contraband over to the Trade Authority down by the entrance lift and offload the contraband immediately. If they don't have enough credits for all the contraband and you don't feel like waiting on the couch, it might be worth purchasing ammo for the weapons you've chosen to use for now too. There are a couple of ways to go about getting yourself more healing items before heading out to frag some more spacers. For healing specifically, you'll be looking for med packs, trauma packs, and emergency kits. These eight items all function the same, with different percentages of healing. If you're not interested in running all over city districts, you can try the clinic space station that's orbiting Depala in the Narion system. The fellow you're looking for here is Ocean Salvato, I hope I pronounced that right, and he'll sell you medical supplies in large amounts thanks to this being a floating hospital. If you're having trouble finding him, you can bring up the scanner to see the NPC's names without walking up to all of them, and I found him myself in the staff area. There's a little in regards to aid items you can actually steal from here if that's your angle too. If so, you can check the patient rooms on the opposite side from the entrance of the clinic. If you are already in New Atlantis for constellation reasons, there's the Reliant Medical Facility a short boost jump from the lodge's entrance towards the residential district. In spite of several other merchants that I'll list now, Reliant Medical will reliably have more med supplies in bulk. So here's more options if you want to run around for a bit.
As a reminder too, med packs are weightless, while trauma packs and emergency kits have a mass of 0.1 and can add up over time. You probably know where this is going, but I want to just touch on it in case anyone missed this easy equipment quest or needs a refresher because this is still by far some of the easiest high level gear to get in the game. If you're taking part in the quest The Old Neighborhood again and end up at the Nova Galactic Star Yard near Earth's Moon, or you've otherwise found spacers basically anywhere, they are likely to drop a note called Secret Outpost. Picking up this note will start you on a mission called The Mantis where you can head to Denebola 1B in the Denebola system, fight through some more spacers and robotic defenses, get to the Mantis's lair, and grab some sweet armor as well as a registered ship in the process. The quest itself makes this ridiculously easy to follow, but once you get to the Mantis's lair and approach the spacesuit case containing the Mantis armor, if you save before accessing the mannequin, you can reroll the legendary effects as many times as you want to get what you're looking for. After you're satisfied with the armor that you have, you can send the ship to the surface, hop in the elevator, and jump into the cockpit of your very own. Razor Leaf. This ship is comparatively just easier to work with than the Starborn Guardian, and of course, since it's registered already, you can modify or rebuild the Razor Leaf as soon as you land at a spaceport. The reason why I waited to mention this now is you should be swimming in tens of thousands of credits at least to start outfitting the Razor Leaf how you want it. If you're going to be spending extra time in this playthrough and want to ship with a bit more oomph, getting to the end of the Free Star Rangers questline will reward you with the Star Eagle. This is the ship that made me fall in love with EM weapons and doesn't really need any modification to serve you well since most of its modules are rank 4 by default. With the money you've made either from thieving, selling books, or both, you'll have the option of loading down your ship with cargo modules or setting yourself up with a quick outpost. There are two spots that I like to use for this, but first I want to mention that in New Game Plus, your ship doesn't come with a bunch of starter resources like the Frontier does in a brand new playthrough. So, since you have some credits to work with now, I hope, we'll take a short shopping spree over to the distribution center in the commercial district of New Atlantis and buy up all the raw resources there, then, just for good measure, head to Jemison Mercantile at the spaceport and buy up all the resources from there too. Now for the two moons that I like to set up outposts. Anderfon is quickly becoming an all-reliable and is the moon of Sumati in the Narion system, the same system we start the game in. This is also the moon I used for my outpost tutorial because it's perfect for starter bases thanks to having iron, aluminum, helium-3, low gravity, huge time dilation, and low threat levels. Here you can fabricate as many adaptive frames as you fancy, which are required for storage containers and many other modules. The second place I like to put an outpost is Tau Seti 8b, a moon of the Tau Seti 8 ice giant in the Tau Seti system. This moon has aluminum, iron, and all the ingredients you need to make the chem called AMP thanks to its flora and fauna too. Since getting around quickly on foot benefits just about everything you're doing in Starfield, having a renewable AMP source is just lovely. New Game Plus is a perfect time as any to round out your character build how you want it. If leveling up rapidly is your plan, remember to rest for an hour in a bed to get that extra 10% bonus experience too, or even higher if you're romancing someone. The first and most straightforward is taking on the main story again. As I said, being a Starborn does still let you expedite sections of the main story, and each main mission you complete does give you a lot of experience when compared to other quests. The main missions are of course finite per run, and you may have chosen to skip the main story, so here are a couple of other options. Do you want to be violent or crafty? If violence is your answer and you're not against killing wildlife to make numbers go up, I have a couple worlds in mind that you can check out for different level brackets of enemies. First is Nemeria 4A in the Nemeria system. This system is in the middle upper edge of the star map, just straight up from Crix almost. While it's not the highest level option, Nemeria 4A is inhabited by only flying fauna, making this place the easiest shooting gallery around. The brain blimps and whale sharks are what we're after, but it probably will only take you a few seconds to spot them. They're so easy to see, in fact, that you can just walk a few paces out of your ship, shoot everything large that's in the air, then pick another landing zone and repeat. The second, much higher level option is Celebri 2 in the Celebri system. This system is almost in between Crix and Ixil. On Celebri 2, the round shell grazers that are found in just about every biome are big and round, therefore easy to spot. I recommend hunting them in the mountain and savanna biomes, so there's not much for 
or trees obstructing your psychotic safari. Round shells can also be found flocking together, which makes for easy multi-kill opportunities, especially with explosives. There are also lion bears and leaf backs here that you can take out, but they're smaller targets, and in the case of lion bears, they can also shoot back. If you're going for a more peaceful and less murdery route of gaining experience, mass crafting adaptive frames is viable for experience gain as well. Expanding a little on what we went over in the outpost section already, this method involves finding a world with both iron and aluminum, like my favorite moon, Androphon, then finding the seam between biomes so you can get both resources in the same location. Once you've found a good spot between mountains and craters, in Androphon's case, then you can place down your extractors, power, storage, industrial workbench, and a bed. Once this outpost is set up, all you need to do is rest in the bed for a few hours so your storage fills up, then craft all the adaptive frames you can, and repeat as necessary. This crafting method has a bonus of money making as well because you can take those hundreds of adaptive frames you've made back to a major city and sell them too. If you are in need of manufactured components like drilling rigs, reactive gauges, and zero wire for your outpost modules, you could set up a fabrication line yourself or an industrial workbench, or you could steal a ton of components from Hopetown. Hopetown is the home of Hope Tech Ship Manufacturing and is located on Polvo in the Volo system, which is often occupying the same space as the Narion system on the star map. When you land at the spaceport here and open up your scanner, you'll see a ton of warehouse containers completely unguarded. There are in fact a couple big stacks of these right next to where your ship lands. Even if you get loaded down, the sheer proximity to your ship makes this an incredibly easy method to get manufactured components quickly. I'm not entirely sure that you can get this place to respawn unless you're in another new game plus but with the component hall you can end up with i don't know if it's really necessary either way a starting variety of components is good but the bulk of them will probably need to be shoved over to a storage container as soon as possible because they are quite heavy to replenish vendors, some containers, and wait out resource extractors, it takes a couple of days or a couple of weeks in-game to do so. If you're not aware already, this is measured in universal time, not local time. So if you go to a place like Venus where the time dilation is astronomical, one hour there can pass 100 hours universal time. Resting a full 24 hours on Venus is a great way to guarantee that things will respawn, replenish, and fill up if they are capable of doing so. Do you have any New Game Plus methods and tricks you like to do to speed up your run? Leave them in the comments below to help out your fellow captains. If you're not tired of me just yet, I have other Starfield videos you can check out here, including some useful tips and tricks, outpost building, and collectibles. If you found this guide useful, entertaining, or both, please do whatever you see fit to show that. Among the ways you can is by supporting on Patreon like the fantastic people on screen now, as well as my Wasteland Legends Rose and Sven. Thank you so much for watching, I'm Kato Genesis, and I hope to see you among the stars.